an absolute world classic prison break movie, maybe one of the best. It's Robert Bresson's A Man Escaped. Let's review it and analyze it, helping you understand what it's about and what's so interesting about this movie to a number of directors who have loved Bresson's work and have been greatly influenced by it. So let's take a look at this movie coming up next. <laughs> French director Robert Bresson, pardon my French, his fourth feature film, A Man Escaped, is, in a way, a simple prison break movie in which the main character, Fontaine, during 1943, detained by the Nazis, put in a horrible jail, wants to break free. The whole movie is about how Fontaine tries to get out of the prison. Interestingly, the title gives away the ending, so there's no spoilers in this because the title gives it all away. But this movie, as a prison break movie, I think is highly influential. You know, on imdb.com, the number one movie for a long time, I think more than a decade, has been The Shawshank Redemption, the early 1990s movie about a man wrongly imprisoned and trying to break out of prison. And that movie, people love the idea of the existential hero who's going to break free from the systems that constrain him and become free. And then that's what A Man Escaped from 1956 is all about, getting out of the Nazi prison system, becoming your own man. And this movie is clinical in the way that it shows this character Fontaine step by step try to break out of prison. It reminds me a little bit of The Count of Monte Cristo, obviously a famous French novel. You know, early in that in that book, the main character tries to break out of prison and does successfully. That's not a spoiler. And people love that book, of course. And so I think that's what's going on in A Man Escaped. You've got all of these little details leading this man to disassemble his door uh, pit by bit, to deal with his mattress, to make ropes, and all the things that he gets in prison or can smuggle uh, you know, he uses to try to escape. This is really interesting in a way it's a Robinson Crusoe kind of movie where a man has all these tools and tries to make as efficient and careful use of them as he can in order to get a job done. And on the one hand, this is a historical movie about the French resistance to the Nazis and praising the French resistance for, you know, opposing fascism in general, Nazi, fat, Nazi socialism in particular. This is also a generic movie in which it's about the will and desire the freedom of the individual. This is a moment where French existentialism as a philosophy is coming into vogue in Western society, creeping into movies, and you get a lot of heroes and antiheroes trying to break free of systems and prisons, and it's wrong in these movies to have them constrained by these systems. Well, that's what's going on here. You root for the hero Fontaine throughout the entire movie as he uses his brain and his hands to figure out how to get free of the systems that oppress him, these very close and tight walls. It's a claustrophobic movie, and yet here is a man with the will and desire to get out of the systems. So I think this movie you know, is a, a part about existentialism in general, the freedom of the individual and the abstract, so the enlightenment ideal of the freedom of the individual. And it uses you know, particular details to make you want him to break free. Breaking apart the door in this movie is just amazing, and you've never cared so much about a little piece of wood falling off a door as you have in this movie. So Bresson's technique is so good and shot for shot. Clinical is not a great word for it. I think exacting and efficient, just like the main character in this movie. I think the way this movie was assembled is just like the prison break stuff going on in the movie. So the form of the movie is about its content. Now the Fontaine character is not just an isolated individual in this doing all the work himself. It takes some social cooperation. The best he can do, tap on a neighbor's walls, talk to them when they meet in the courtyard very briefly during each day, be very patient, listen, have each other watch out for the guards. And you do see a lot of social cooperation in this movie, although it's not noticeable because usually there's only one character on the screen, but always there's more than one character you know, a group uh, cooperation going on behind the scenes. Nevertheless, I do think the individual man as a hero is played up here. And one of the things that shows up a lot in this movie are hands, shots of big hands doing things with the mattress, with the wire, with the door, with the spoon, all over the place, you get huge hands on screen disembodied from the body of Fontaine, although you know they're his hands. I, this reminds me of the Renaissance ideal, particularly from Michelangelo. If you look at Michelangelo's statue, David, the hands on the David 
are enormous, out of proportion to the body. And the question is why? Well, because the hands are the things that make things happen. In the real world, they do the labor, the craft, and they're connected to the brain. The brain is the thinking organism or the organ that you know creates all these things rationally in the imagination, but then the hands are the practical aspects that enact the imagination. And so in this movie, I think that's what you've got going on here, especially with disembodied hands. That's all you see at times are Fontaine's you know, craftsmanship with his hands. This movie is praising artisanship, craftsmanship, meticulous details of the hands moving around, and that's what gets him free in part, not just his will and desire, but his ability to work with his hands. Now, this is in opposition to the factory systems, the huge factories that are being built all over the world, obviously post-industrial re revolution by 100 plus years. And yet, you know, those things are taking over the world and we're losing artisanship and craftsmanship. Well, this movie is praising inherently the individual artisan as craftsman, thus breaking free of the systems that constrain one of which could be in a weird way in this movie, in the deep background, the factory systems that make stuff for people. And, you know, Fontaine in this movie shows you through various dissolves, and you'll, you'll see probably 100, 50 to 100 dissolves in this movie showing you the leaps or passages of time. Fontaine has to wait for a new, a new spoon to show up. He's got to wait for, you know, to craft the door to get it to come apart. He's got to wait because he's transferred to a different prison cell and waiting, 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 dissolve, dissolve, dissolve. Those dissolves are really fascinating. This sets up, and here's a spoiler alert, although not really the last shot of the movie, which I find to be absolutely fascinating. You know, usually the great movies have fascinating final shots. Here you have Fontaine and the other man he escapes with disappearing into the night fog just outside the prison. So one, of course, you don't know what's happening to him. Two, this fog is like another kind of dissolve. It's the characters going into, as it were, the mists of time and dissolving into the background. And the movie is signaling to you this is a historical movie. This kind of thing happened 13 years ago as of 1956, you know, in World War II. And uh, is, he, is he living now or is that sort of thing the sort of ethic in the background of history and have we changed too much the question of will fontaine in his ethic and his you know heroism will that be maintained in france post-world war ii or not i think that's one of the ideas going with him going into the fog in this movie is he's dissolving maybe into nothing so maybe his ethic and his heroism go away or we might have another shot coming after that dissolve of it that doesn't happen in this movie with you, the viewer, becoming like Fontaine and being inspired by him. And now Brisson is a very influential director, as you know, just look around the internet, just look in movie history books. And I think pretty much any prison break movie that's going to be made is gonna to look to this movie. This movie occupies a lot of prison break territory. I mean, it does all kinds of things that later prison break movies do making them feel cliched because this movie did it i know there are prison break movies before a man escaped but this movie feels like it's the one to me uh, maybe besides shawshank because shawshank is so popular but a man escaped is a classic that everyone's got to watch and study if you hate it you got to come up with some reasons why and it'd be really interested as to why you don't like this movie uh, and how you watch it so leave us some comments in this, but I, I really like this movie a lot. I would show it to my kids and I would show it to other people who I think are interested in the craftsmanship of filmmaking and then you get to watch the craftsmanship of Fontaine on screen. So for all those reasons, I think this movie is a great, it, so for all those reasons, I think, so for all those reasons, I think this movie is great. It's a classic and worth rewatching every now and then. A Man Escaped. If you like this movie, comment. If you don't, comment. And please subscribe to this channel for more great movie content. Thank you and have a great day.